Okay guys, so I'm going to show you how to add a layer for the background and I'm also going to show you how to add a color gradient. So first of all, this is the Cityscape project that you will have had. You are going to have something different and maybe more complex than mine. Um, if I want to add a layer in the background, what I'm actually going to do is open up my layer palette and I'm going to click the plus sign. Now right now, the layer that I added is above this layer. So if I drew something on it, like if I drew a rectangle on it, it would show up above um, or in front of the buildings. So I'm going to click and actually dry it, drag it and wait till the blue line is underneath layer one and drop it there. Okay, that indicates that that layer is in the background. Now, I am going to toggle the visibility on and off, meaning I'm going to make it so that you can't see the buildings right now. Okay. All I'm focusing on is layer number two. Now notice that it's this is red right here, and the thing that I create has a, a red um, outline around it, um, and I could change that color if I wanted to. Um, I forget how to do that, and it's not a huge uh, important thing. It might be under options. If I right click, it's probably probably has some options for it, but it doesn't really matter. But that's how you can that's how you know that it's on this red layer. Right. There's some other colors. Like if I add another layer, it would be, look at that, that's green. Okay. But I don't need that layer. All right, let's go with this one. We are going to create a background color by making a rectangle that is identical to the size of the artboard. Okay. Now I can add a color into it like this. If I wanted to add like a blue color into it, I could go ahead and do that. And then if I toggle this back on, you could see that that would be blue, right? but I want you to make it a little bit more dynamic. I actually want you to make it so that it's a gradient. A gradient is a way to blend two colors, to, to go from one color to the other with all the shades in between. The way that you do that is, um, I'm gonna close down this palette for a second. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna click over, so that's this one right here. It's the gradient palette. I'm gonna click over here. I'm gonna click right here, because right now I am operating, I want, if you click that, it becomes a gradient. Now, uh, meaning it's shifting from white to black with gray in between. I want it from the light to be on the bottom and the dark to be on top. I want it to simulate a sort of uh, dusk, right? Where you have the, the sunlight receding down, going down into the horizon. And so it's dark on top and light on the bottom. So I'm actually going to use this and rotate it so that the gradient rotates um, so the light's on the bottom and the dark is on top. Now, I don't want black and white. What I want instead is I want a color range. So if I double click here, right now it's only giving me black and white. So if you click here, a lot of times for some strange reason, the default is on grayscale. So you have to click over to RGB. All of a sudden, you have all the colors. Now, if I switched over to, let's say that I want orange at the bottom, that's this one right here. So I want an orangey color. Maybe I want it a brighter orange like that at the bottom. That will change that bottom, but it's still fading into black. So if I double click here, I click over to RGB, maybe I want a blue on top. Okay, and all of a sudden you have a more dynamic, a little or, um, purple in between. Okay, now let's say that I want, this is the midway point between the two colors. I can slide this down so that the midway point becomes lower on the page, all right? Then again, if I if I go back to my layers and I toggle this on, look how nice this looks. But I can't really see the orange, so let me toggle this off, go back to here in the gradient menu, and bring my midpoint back up. Now let's say I want to add another color. If I hover over here, I get a little plus sign with the arrow. I can click here and I get another color. Notice that there's two midway points now can double click here and then add something else. Maybe I want to add like a, uh, a red like that in between. And again, I can click up my midway point so that I, it changes like that. Okay, so I can add as many as I want. Maybe I want to add over here, I want to add a purple. So that in between those two colors, it is purple. All right, so that's how you can add a gradient now when I toggle this back on so you can see it, it looks like a nice um, sunset, okay? You can also make the gradient so that it looks like this. And you can pull the center down, whoops. You can, ch 
change this. You can sort of, well, I keep, you know what? You can change the appearance of this by just messing with some of these features like this, okay? So you can play around with that. Um, this gradient, I think, is new. Not really sure what that is. Whoops. Okay, I am back. Adobe crashed when I went to that other gradient, so I'm not going to try that right now. Um, so here I am with this layer right here. I can toggle this back on to get my... Uh, notice this is different than the one that I showed you before because it crashed and then I hadn't saved it, so that was terrible. Always make sure to save your stuff. In fact, let me go Command S right now to save it. Sure. Um, all right, so... What I want to do though is I want, before I go to the other layer, I want to lock this layer down. So notice that right now it's selected. If I lock it, it makes it so that I can't select it. So when I put this back on, when I, if I ever try to select everything here, it's not going to select the background layer and like shift it or anything. Okay. Now, I want to also add a layer of buildings in the background, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So, um, this picture right here that I set you for inspiration has these layers of building behind this, the front buildings that are between the front buildings and the background. So I want to add, I want you guys to add more complexity to your cityscape project by adding a building layer in the background of your main building layer. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is click and drag across all the things that are on the top layer. And for right now, I'm going to hit um, I want to group these together. So I'm going to say either right click or group or object group right there or command G or control G. So right now they're all grouped together. Okay. Um, now I want to add a layer that is between this one and this one. So let me add it and I'm going to pull it between that layer. Okay. Now I'm going to take my rectangle right here and I want to make it into a color. Let's say that it is, let's say that I kind of want a blue, but I want like a grayish blue, like this, okay? And so that, um, I want to click that so it's solid. I think that's gonna make it solid. Okay, now I'm going to start building the layer in the background. Notice that's green, so it, that indicates that it's on the green layer. So if you if you look at it, it's building this layer in the back here that's between the front and the back layer. Okay, so you're just going to keep adding these things right here. Oops, I think I'm not on the right layer here. Click over here, then continue to add. So I want to add these, and if you're on the correct layer, it will shoot right into the back. All right, so we'll add all of this interesting stuff in the back here, and just do whatever you want. You kind of want to do it all the way across, though. Maybe you can also add, um, you know, you can make them overlap. It's kind of just a nice way of adding some interest in the back there. You know, maybe it doesn't have to be all the way across like that. So here's this layer right here, um, and you want to make sure that these are all that these are all grouped as one single layer, okay? Or right. I want them all to be grouped. So go to this layer, click on the top object, hold down, it keeps crashing, don't send, okay. Okay, click on the top layer, hold down shift and click on this one. That's, that's selecting everything on this layer. I'm gonna go to object and, oops, not letting me group this for some reason. It should have selected all of my objects. So I'm not sure why that's not a feature, but another way of doing it is just going across and holding down shift to select multiple items right here. And then holding down shift and saying group that way. That way these are all, you know, together like that. All right. Now you can click up to the top layer like that. Um, you can even lock this layer if you wanted to. Uh, so that you have some more complex shapes. You can also add, if you wanted to, you know, the inspiration on has, some of them have grayed out windows or windows that show like something in the background. Uh, it shows the uh, sunset in the background. So you could go and try to do that. 
you know, um, I'm going to show you how to use a tool for to like cut things out so that you can see um, in between it in the next video, like take a cookie cutter out. But you could add, you know, maybe some gray windows in there somewhere. Okay, so Adobe just crashed a, th a second time or a third time. I lost track because it appears that running the video editing software and Adobe at the same time is just overpowering my computer right now. I probably have a few things that I can uh, shut off if, if I need to. Like maybe I have to shut off a zoom and a right click and quick. Maybe that will help free up some room space. Anyhow, you could add windows here if you wanted to, like onto this layer. That You know what? That's not on the proper layer. Let me go to this layer. Let me take this one off that layer. Now I'm on this layer, so the things that I draw will be on that layer. So I can add windows if I want, and you can also change the opacity of the window so it looks like it's sort of um, more see-through. So you can change it so that it's really, really opaque, like so that it just kind of fades out like that. So it's just a little bit uh, different from the other background. So remember, you could add a bunch of windows by continuing to copy and paste. Whoa! You know, let me lock that layer down so it doesn't do that. I can grab these two, copy, paste. Remember, if you ever make a mistake like I just did, what you can do is um, do Command Z and that will get it back. So I gotta get these on the same line. Is that it? Um, to fine tune this, you can also use the up arrow key. That sometimes is helpful. And then I can grab all four of those by clicking and holding Shift and copy, paste. Now, I don't know why they show up down there, but they do. And then I can click and shift and get all eight, copy, paste, like that. So if I wanted to, I could just go through this pretty quickly and fine tune it and add some windows to my background. That looks really nice. Um, that's a nice thing to do when you're just like, uh, want to fine tune something. But um, I would suggest adding some details in the back so that it looks nice. But that's how you add a background layer, how you add a gradient, and then um, a layer in between the background and the buildings. Okay, so in order to do well, I've split this, uh, I've split this assignment up into two summatives. One of the summatives is just the shape and the original color. It's the building colors right there. So the work that you did last week. And then the second summative is the work that you're doing this current week. Um, so that would be advanced coloring, like using a gradient. And then the next lesson is where I show you how to make a compound shape. Okay? Have fun.